You'll get to see it. We'll get to taste it. Then you'll get to make it. Scott Record, we're here on beautiful Buzzards Bay, real capey day. I'm here to show you how to make classic clam chowder from start to finish. By start, I mean I'm going to dig the clams. This is my clam rig. I've come out here at low tide. The way you do the way you find them, you know, the clams around here are called cohogs, which is an old Wampanoag Indian term, cohogs, but they're sea clams. The big ones are called bulls, the little ones that you eat raw, cherry stones. So I'm going to feel around with my foot while I'm talking to you. I'm looking for what feels like cobblestones. I'll feel a little bump, there's a bump, and there's a couple of bumps. So then I take this rake, go in, rake it in the sand and lift it up. Let me find that bump again. There we go, hold on. Success. Success. All right. If you can look and see in there, I just got five. That's a nice. That's a nice haul. And I uh, always bring my trusty life preserver in my old bucket. That's a. That's a, a bushel. And that's what's allowed. I have my clam license in my pocket. We do everything legal. This is a bull. This is probably half a pound of meat in there. That's a bull one. Another bull. Over here. It, there's nothing fresher than this. Look at these dudes. These are two kind of big cherry stones. In fact, I'll show you how cool this is. In my pocket, always carry your shucking knife. Because I'm an old shucker and I've been shucking for years. So what you do is you come in, in the side with the shucking knife. Boy, these, these guys. Woo! He's, he's tough. You find it over. When they're right out of the water, they're so tough to get into. But I'm gonna get this guy. I'm in. I'm in. Come around like this. Bring the shucking knife around. He's open. There's a couple of muscles you have to cut on the side. And then, voila. That's the baby. So you take the knife, go around the outside. Cut this film off, it's all part of it, it's all edible. Comes in like this. I now have a loose clam that I just got out of the ocean. And it's in my belly! I love it, there's nothing better. Once the clam chowder is made, a perfect matching would be a very fine Pulini Montrachet, which is a very, very fine uh, white wine from the French region, near the Bordeaux region, but actually, <laughs> isn't Mother Nature wonderful? Hey, Scott, I'm back at the house. We're inside now, we've dug the clams, we dig up the um, Pollini Montrachet, which is now being chilled. We're here for classic clam chowder, and you have to start out very beginning with salt pork. You have to have a piece of salt pork, and you have to have it slightly frozen because it cuts easier. I'm gonna do a magic trick and appear with the salt pork. See nothing in my hands? Boom, magic. All right, this is salt pork. This is about 10 ounces of salt pork and it's sliced, it's pre-sliced, which helps you cut it down into little tiny little chunks. Um, but it's frozen, it's partially frozen. It makes it a lot easier. So if you see, see how it's cut? It's already sliced that way. So I'm gonna take it and cut it this way. Nice big cast iron 
Le Pousset pot. This goes here, and this all goes in at the same time, all this saw pork. I've got the smallest amount of heat on there, and there's the, there's the pork. I'm gonna put the cover on this cast iron Dutch oven, and it will render down. Now, potato time. So these potatoes are organic Yukon Gold potatoes. Because of the flavor, the Yukon Gold is excellent. I won't peel these. We'll wash them and use the skin because all the nutrients are in the skin. And I stress organic in every ingredient in this because, let's put it this way, it takes five cucumbers from the regular store to give you the same amount of nutrition as one organic cucumber. That's why people may sometimes be a little bit larger because we have that caveman need for nutrition like the cavemen had. Same thing, we're just humans, we're basic DNA, the same thing. We require that nutrition, but because of hybridization and GMO and all, all the kind of stuff that they do to vegetables now, you need five vegetables of regular quality to be equal to an organic vegetable. So you eat more to try to get more nutrition. Anyway, here's the organic Yukon Gold. I'm gonna rinse them off and then I'm gonna come back and show you how I like them cut. So here's what I'm gonna do. When we cut the veggies, when we cut the celery, when we cut the tomato, the uh, potatoes, I want big chunks, because what happens is if it's left there to cook for a long time, be it a soup, be it a chowder, be it anything like that, if it's left in the wet and cooking for a long time, it will disappear, it'll just cook away. So big chunks potatoes, big chunks celery, ends up having a nice hearty chowder at the end. So when I was in the water earlier digging the cohogs, this is what we came up with. These babies right here, all right? Beautiful, different sizes, lots of meat. And when I want a clam chowder, if I go in a restaurant, I want to taste the clams. I want the clams to be there. So I want to save the clam meat, which will be saved in a colander, but the colander will be in this pot so that I can save the clam juice, because that's a big, big part of the chowder. To do this correctly, I have my clamming knife, my shucking knife here, very special, my favorite one. And then this glove, it just looks like a white mesh glove. It's a metal mesh, which if anybody's gonna be shucking clams, I would highly recommend finding yourself one of these because you can just hit it by accident, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna puncture, you're not gonna cut your hand because of the metal mesh. And I've had this, from a dear friend, Tom Casella gave me this six years ago. It's the greatest thing. So now, here's the cohog. And of course, as you know, the two shells come together at this seam. They're holding it together with a muscle. So I hold this in my palm, put my knife there. And I get in. I actually cracked that shell, but see the juice coming out? <laughs> that is gold, folks, right there. Liquid gold. So it gave me a little bit of problem by cracking the shell, but I go around the sides. There's a muscle on each side that I want to sever. Now she opens up. Cut this little ribbon, which is their seal. I think it's their seal. and cut the seal around the top, cut the seal around the bottom, like that. The whole clam meat is in there, and the shell is right here. And we will just continue on with all of these clams. By the way, do you see the purple on the outs outer edge of the inner shell? The purple, the Wampanoag Indians would call wampum. They would break this purple off like this. This shell has lots of wampum. This one 
has a bit on the ends. So they would break it up and it was their form of currency. They would use wampum to buy things, to exchange animals and this, that, and the other into. It was an amazing thing. So this is one incredible show with wampum. This is like two and a half pounds, as I said, of clams. It's nice to put them in a, in a long cutting pattern because then I really only have to go through it once. But there's some gigantic pieces in here and then they'll just be good sized chunks. So the, it's salt pork, so it's salty. I don't put any salt in it, I use unsalted butter. I'm gonna put the clams in with the clam juice and then put the potatoes in. And everybody will start getting real friendly. It'll be like a nice community meeting. So here we are. What we have in here now, we started with the salt pork and cut it up into little bits and rendered it for an awful long time so there was quite a bit of fat. And I don't use any salt while cooking because that salt pork is salty. Uh, then we cut the vegetables, we cut the, the onions, the celery, in big chunks, cooked them in the rendered salt fat. Then I've taken the clams, the clams are chopped and they're in there, two and a half pounds of clams. Uh, the clam juice is in there and now that we're boiling a little bit, I'm gonna take those beautiful Yukon gold potatoes and in they go. I don't wanna splatter. Like that. Just let them go a little bit. I wanna see pepper, I wanna see, I want ground pepper. So look at this, look at this, look at what happens here. Look, it's, can you see that? Isn't this wonderful? So now we're back here with the thickener and the product is now just about finished. We're boiling, which is great. The potatoes are soft. The clams are in there. Everything's in there you've seen from start to finish. And now, put a little bit of flour and water mixture. And because it's boiling, we will get thickness. I don't like very, 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 very thick. And then we will finish it off with some cream. I don't know who this guy is over here next to me. Actually, a boat washed up on shore with Italian written on the side of it, Italian words. And this guy comes up here and he's hungry. So we're gonna give him some chowder. I'm Pietro. I'm Pietro. I'm Pietro. <laughs> From Italy, a boat washed up on shore. I mean, I've had San Salvador people wash up on shore, but this is a first. <laughs> so, um, tell me what you think. Mm. It looks delicious, big chunks of potato. Yeah. You know, it's, plenty it's, of clams. it's funny how you said that you didn't put any salt because right. it, everything would, it would have natural salt and that's what you taste. I hope the finish is worth it. Oh, it's delicious. Thank you so much for having us today. We're going to do it again. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to cook something else for you soon, so stay tuned. I'm eating. No more talk. No more talk. This is good. Mm -hmm. 